Now let's talk about quantitative electrochemistry, something I like to call electron bookkeeping, because we're going to be doing stoichiometry with half reactions, and that stoichiometry will involve the number of electrons in the half reaction. For example, if I look at a reduction half reaction for magnesium, it would start with magnesium 2 plus ions. plus two electrons going to magnesium solid. And the we could write a stoichiometry relationship between uh, any of these, but including the electrons, that what that would look like is, so for every one mole of magnesium or magnesium ion, we need two moles of electrons to make it produce it, or to react it away. Now, uh, to make this useful to us for solving chemistry and even engineering problems, we have to talk about something called current. And current is the amount of charge flowing past a point in a given time. The amount of charge flowing past a point in a given time. And uh, for us, that means that there's going to be uh, a relationship between the amount of charge and the number of electrons that are flowing past the point. And we've sort of talked about this before when we talked about the Faraday constant, and we're going to be using the Faraday constant again here uh, in just a minute. But first, we're going to define the units of current, and the units of current are going to be amps uh, or amperes. One ampere, which we will abbreviate as one amp, or one capital A, is equal to one coulomb of charge per one second. And so one amp equals one coulomb per second. Oop, let's get that on screen there. And uh, this will be a fine, this is sort of a definition of an amp. Uh, oftentimes though, we will have amps and we will have time so another way of saying it is amps times seconds equals Coulomb. So if you had 10 amps over 10 seconds, that would be 100 Coulombs. Now, okay, so, and we can measure amps uh, using a multimeter, um, and we can measure time using a stopwatch, and that's, uh, if we were in the lab, that's how we would do it. So we could get Coulombs, and then we need the Faraday constant, which tells us that 96,485 Coulombs is equal to, or per, one mole of electrons. So our stoichiometry of half reactions is uh, we will know a mole-to-mole -mole ratio here using the moles of electrons. And we will use uh, the mole of electrons to coulombs and coulombs to amps times seconds, uh, or the reverse of that. We're going to be doing stoichiometry both ways. And now let's move on to an example. So in this example, the reduction of silver deposits silver on the cathode of a voltaic cell. And interestingly enough, so uh, the reduction of silver uh, was one of the first ways they used to measure current and actual electricity way back in the day when they first uh, started um, uh, having electrical uh, electricity in houses. So you would have a little box of silver, and as the silver became either uh, oxidized or reduced, 
you could figure out how much current and how much electricity had flowed. Of course, it's a lot different now. If 1.50 amps flow for 15 minutes, how many grams of silver are deposited? Our process, uh, we're going to be starting with amps times time. And of course, we've been given minutes here, so we have to convert minutes into seconds. But amps times seconds will be coulombs, so let's start there. So I'm going to start with 15.0 minutes. We know that there is one, uh, one minute equals 60 seconds. Uh, so I'm going to give seconds there. I get 900 seconds. Seconds times amps will give me coulombs. I have 1.50 amps. Sorry, I want to keep doing angstroms there, but there shouldn't be anything up there. That's just in capital A. Times 1.5, I get 1,350. C for coulombs. And our process is now to turn coulombs into moles of electrons. And I will do the rest of this on one picket fence. We said the Faraday constant, which is on your conversion and equation sheet, tells you that there are uh, 96,485 coulombs per one mole of electrons. And then from our half reaction, we know that there's one mole of electrons for every one mole of silver. And we are asked for grams of silver. So back to our old friend, the molar mass. One mole silver, got my periodic table right here, 107.9 grams. Multiplying all this out, I've still got my 1350. Divide that by 96,485. I have a one to one mole ratio here, so no math, times 107.9. I get 1.51 grams of silver. And the reduction of silver can uh, also be used to silver plate materials. And uh, instead of doing silver plating, we're gonna do an example with chrome plating. And we're gonna be chrome plating the bumper of a car. Uh, and please stop the video to write down the problem statement and then continue the video and you'll see my answer to this example. I'll read over it. For chrome plating the bumper of a car, we wish to coat the bumper to a thickness of 0.01 centimeters. The surface area of the bumper is 0.561 meters squared. The reduction half reaction that deposits the chromium is given here. Although I should add my liquid there. Everything else is good. It says, how long does the process take if a current of 10.0 amps is used? And uh, I just realized I did leave out one piece of information, and that is the density of chromium. And the density of chromium is, double check here, 7.15 grams per centimeter square, centimeter cubed, excuse me. And there is a similar homework problem, uh, not chrome plating. Uh, it's going to be some other elements that we're going to be laying down. So look for this on the homework. Okay, so here we're asked how long. And we know, well, we can get the surface area of the bumper and then uh, the volume of the bumper. Turn the volume of the bumper into grams of chromium using the density. Needed, so that'll be the mass of chromium needed to coat the bumper. And then do our mole, uh, our half reaction stoichiometry. And so it's sort of the last problem backwards with an added wrinkle that we need volume to. So um, our process starts by getting the volume of chromium that we need. 
uh, I see I have, and I'll do this in a different color. We know we have 0 0.561 meters squared for the surface area of our bumper. And we know the thickness, but it's in centimeters. I think everything should be in centimeters here because that's what our density is in. So I'm going to turn my meters squared into centimeters squared. I know that one meter equals 100 centimeters. And then since it's squared, I'm going to square that uh, conversion factor. This will give me centimeters squared. I have 0.561 uh, times 100 squared. And I get 5,610. centimeters squared. I now have to multiply that times 0 0.01 centimeters, which is a tenth of a millimeter. Uh, it's, it's enough to coat it. Uh, it seems pretty uh, thin, but that's a lot of atoms that you're building up there. So times 0 0.01 centimeters. So that means move the decimal point over two places. I get 56.1. centimeters cubed and once I have that I now know that I can get my uh, grams of chromium using my density let's see so uh, I have 56.1 centimeters cubed I will now use my density as a unit conversion factor because centimeters cubed We'll go on the bottom, let's see. Yeah, centimeters cubed. I now have 7.15 grams. So, yep. So now, what I already did is I divided this by 100. Now I multiply it times 7.15. I get 401 grams of chromium. And I know my grams. I know my relationship between my, well, let's find moles next. And let's go into red. For my periodic table, I know that there are 52.00 grams of chromium for one mole. There's uh, two moles of chromium for every 12 moles of electrons. Whew, it takes a lot of electrons. And uh, I'm going for how long. So now that I'm at moles of electrons, I then uh, use the Faraday constant to get Coulombs. And I'm gonna actually stop there and write my answer down here Let's see, 401 divided by 52 times 6 times 96,485. I get 404, whoa, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, let's see if it'll do it in scientific. Nope, it won't. So 4.46 times 10 to the 6 coulombs and uh, once I have coulombs and coulombs equals amps times time and I have 10.0 amps so divide this by 10, I get my time, which will be 4.46 times 10 to the fifth seconds. Yep, grams of chromium, yep, which is a very long time. We would want uh, to not wait this long. 
Uh, and that's a very thin layer, but that seems like a realistic estimate of how long it would take. I think they'd have to use many more amps, so closer to 100 or 1,000 to bring this down to a realistic time scale. Uh, let's convert this into hours, divide by 3,600. 124 hours, yeah, something's up here. That's too long for an industrial process to take with just my back of the envelope calculation on how to chrome, uh, chrome plate a bumper. Well, um, let's look at another example. And in this example, in the lead storage battery usually found in cars, the battery delivers 1.5 amp and starts with 1.00 pound of lead. How long can the car run before it runs out of lead? And um, if you've ever left your uh, battery uh, in use uh, for your car, even after you've turned it off, you know that after three or four hours, even with a good battery, your battery's dead. Uh, and let's see if, if it's because we run out of lead. I mean, if we run out of lead, that would limit how long the car could continue to function at the 1.5 amps. Um, and here's our half reaction. Here's the components of a lead car battery. It has lead and lead sulfate both in the solid phase. It also has, uh, and this is an old style car battery, has sulfuric acid in it. So let's see, how long can the car run before it runs out of lead? We know we have one pound of lead. Let's see, I think we're gonna need a long uh, picket fence here. Uh, we know that 2.2 uh, pounds is one kilogram and we know that one kilogram is a thousand grams so now we have grams of lead we know the molar mass of lead so 207.2 grams of lead for one mole and Let's end up with moles of electrons and then coulombs, really stringing it together here. It's a long picket fence. So one mole of lead uh, reacted creates two moles of electrons. And there are 96,485. Coulombs per mole of electrons. So stringing this all together, uh, we'll end up with a number of coulombs. One divided by 2.2 times 1,000 divided by 207.2 times two times 96.485 equals 4.23 times 10 to the fifth. Coulombs. And let's see, 4.23 times 10 to the fifth. Coulombs equals amps times seconds. Divided by our 1.50 amps. And I'll come back to 4.23 exponent 5 here. Divided by 1.5, I get 282,000 seconds. Which, again, we'll divide by 3,600. 78 hours. And... Uh, what I would suggest to you is that since most cars run down their batteries in three to four hours, that the issue is not that the car is running out of lead. It's actually uh, much more true that the lead that can be uh, oxidized or that the car, that the electrodes have access to is gone by then. So it's three to four hours is due to the fact that the uh, lead that's close, that can be oxidized, uh, 
that the lead that can be oxidized easily right it says it's a it's an air it's a position where is the lead in the car that can be oxidized the lead uh, that can be oxidized easily is exhausted because the way a car battery works is it then uses this lead to um, run the car and then when you turn the car or this is when the car is off you're using it up you turn the car on it does the reverse direction to recharge the battery and as you cycle through it you need to have the lead uh, handy in a proper area inside your car battery so let's see that's another calculation uh, we have one more to do and please take a moment to write down this problem I've got a picture of the process for the electrolysis of sodium chloride liquid which is molten sodium chloride this is going to be at a temperature of uh, 801 degrees Celsius and it says how long does it take to produce 2.00 times 10 to the third liters of chlorine at a partial pressure of chlorine of 80.0 atmospheres with a current of 1000 amps that's 1.0 times 10 to the third amps here's another example of this is how this process is typically run at a thousand amps and uh, I don't know if you can see it but we are producing sodium metal here as the same time that we are producing uh, chlorine gas and this uh, is going to be uh, liquid sodium chloride so uh, this time let's do it in green we know the volume we know the pressure and we know the temperature of our chlorine gas hmm let's see I would guess actually I'm, I'm gonna change something up here so I'm gonna guess that while it is generated here it's going to be stored at a temperature of 298 Kelvin yeah uh, so let's use that instead I think that's a more uh, useful temperature to store your I mean I don't think this so this process is happening at this high temperature but the gas is going to be stored at a lower temperature um, okay so the first thing we need to do is find out how many moles of chlorine this is which means we need to go back to our ideal gas law we need you're solving for moles and we know we have 80 atmospheres we have a volume of 2,000 liters or 2.00 times 10 to the third this is the ideal gas law so we do use the 0 0.08 206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin and our temperature again we're going to use this at 298 because that's the temperature we're going to be more than likely collecting this gas at or very close to it anyway if we do this 80 times 2000 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 298 we get the moles of chlorine are 6.54 times 10 to the third uh, moles chlorine and from here we take our moles of chlorine similar to the last two examples Uh, now we know the mole ratio for one mole of chlorine two moles of electrons one mole of electrons 96,000 485 coulombs and again this is usually where I stop this is my process so 
So 6.54 x minute third times 2 times 96485, 1.26 times 10 to the 369 uh, coulombs. Divide that by our 1,000 amps. And we get 1.26 times 10 to the 6th seconds, which is a long time. And divide that by our 3,600, 351 hours. And maybe the take home message here is that this is a uh, long process. It takes a long time to uh, generate that much charge, even using a thousand amps.